Hello everyone, welcome to Brayering 101, where you're going to learn how to brayer using the Zindorf technique. Um, I've been braying for quite some time and I've found this to be a very consistent technique that you're going to love. Um, we're going to make this project here. It's a simple silhouette uh, scene and that silhouette, the flower, can be replaced by any silhouette stamp you might have in your arsenal and it will work just perfectly. Um, I'm going to start out by telling you about what you'll need. Um, we're going to use all dye based inks. I use Stampin' Up! products. Um, this is their classic ink which is all dye based. Um, dye based dries super fast and so that's what you want in brayering. Um, I wouldn't use pigment ink because pigment ink dries um, very slow. It stays wet kind of lays on top of the paper and when you mix wet ink with wet ink what happens is you end up with muddy colors where dye based ink dries pretty quick and so um, you won't be mixing wet ink with wet ink and you'll, your colors will stay more true. Um, we're going to use a rubber brayer. This is a speedball brayer. You can also get it from Stampin' Up! Um, it is a soft rubber brayer Mine's pretty stained because I use it a lot. <laughs> a lot, lot, lot. Love this technique. Um, I use all Whisper White paper. This is a super smooth cardstock. Um, Stampin' Up! Whisper White is an awesome paper to use for brayering. Because it's so smooth, um, you don't get a lot of spots in your work. Um, what happens if you have any type of texture in your cardstock when you brayer? Um, your brayer is just going to hit the top of the, the peaks of the paper and not get in the valleys. So if there's a texture, your work will look really spotty. So um, Whisper White, way to go. So we're going to start off here with Daffodil Delight ink. This is a really pretty yellow. And when we load our brayer, we're going to roll one direction. If you roll back and forth like this, you're not inking your entire brayer. So ink one direction. I'm not putting lots of pressure on my ink pad. So when I come over here to my paper, I'm going to roll right next to the paper and then I'm going to come back and just barely catch the edge of the cardstock and then back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. I'm not bearing down on my, my brayer. I'm using light pressure. I continue to ink. I'm going to brayer down to where I want the ink to end every time I ink my brayer. So I want it to end about an inch from the bottom of the paper. I'm going to keep loading it and brayering, building up that color. I'm going to start to notice that I have lines in my work that it go this direction. That's okay, those are called atmospheric lines. I just made that term up, by the way. Um, it describes the lines that I see um, coming this direction. What happens is when your brayer hits the edge of the paper, it shifts the ink on the brayer and it starts making a pattern. I actually like the pattern. It's nothing special I do, it's just brayering. Make sure you're going, when you're brayering it, you're going at least an inch off of your cardstock each direction. And never pick your brayer up until you get to where you want the color to end. So you want a nice bold color built up. You're going to keep putting it on. Um, your ink is going to dry two shades lighter, so make sure that you have enough on there so if it dries some and you lose a couple shades, it's not going to be all washed out looking. So there's my first lightest color. I always start with the lightest color. Um, I'm not going to clean my brayer because I'm going to stay in the same color family. I'm going to go to pumpkin pie next. Um, same color family, going darker so I don't have to clean anything. So I'm going to ink my brayer up and I want this color to come about halfway down into the Daffodil Delight area. I'm, again I'm going to start off that cardstock 
working back and forth and when I get to about the halfway mark where I want it to stop I'm going to hang there for just a few strokes in that same spot and then I'm going to come just a bit further. That gives me a nice transition in between, between one color to the next and I don't get a racing stripe effect. So you want a nice feathery finish. So this is where I want it to end. So I'm going to hang here for just a couple strokes and I'm come a little further. See, I don't have a big line there. It's blending in nicely. And again, we're going to melt this color up. Locking it in. Again, I'm going I'm using light pressure. I'm not bearing down. If you find you're not getting very far on your paper, look at your pressure. You're probably bearing down on that brayer, and so it instantly takes the ink off, and so you don't get anywhere. Also, kind of look at your speed. You want to get your speed up. The faster you brayer, the more ink that gets on your cardstock and the less on your scrap paper. Okay, I got a nice color going here. So we're going to do a three color sky. So that was pumpkin pie. I'm going to go to a darker color. Same color family. I don't have to clean anything, which I love. So this time when I ink, I'm only going to ink up one inch of my brayer because I don't need that much color because this is just going to be at the top of the cardstock here. Starting off the color, the cardstock and I'm going to slow down with this color. Okay, because I don't want to wipe out my pumpkin pie. Um, Cajun Craze is a strong color so it, it will wipe out everything if you don't be careful. Slowing down. I need one about half of the pumpkin pie area. Okay, so slow down, let that ink run out on your brayer before you pick up your brayer. Um, if you've got a bunch of ink on your brayer and you pick your brayer up, if you just do a couple strokes and you pick your brayer up and you've got a whole bunch of ink still on your brayer, what will happen is you'll have a, a racing stripe look. All right, there's our sky. Okay, we got our three colors, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, and Cajun Craze. Now I don't brayer in my ground areas. Um, we're going to use old olives to put in our grass first. I like to sponge them in and when I sponge I use a lot a lot of pressure. So we're going to sponge this in doing a circular motion. Okay, when you use a lot of pressure it fills in really quick. Put about an inch of a half in ink here. Okay filled in. Super fast. I'm all about getting those cards done. Alright, so we're going to ink up our stamp. We're going to use the Nature Silhouettes set. Not Nature Silhouettes, Serene Silhouettes. And we're going to use our flower stamp. Love this image. When I ink my images I like to pat the ink on the stamp instead of the other way around. That lets me see what I'm doing here. Make sure my stamp has lots of ink on it. Okay, and then I'm going to use the five count rule. I'm going to stamp this so the grass is like in, in the grassy part of this is in the middle of our old olive section. I'm going to go all the way to the left with this image and I'm going to use the five count rule. I'm going to hold this for a count of five and then pick it up. That gives me a nice crisp image. If you have problems with light images, make sure you're holding that down for about five, a five count at least. Okay, now we're going to get another sponge here, our basic black. And I'm going to sponge in basic black just up to this ground area on the image. I like to pounce this in, get it good and dark. By putting the darkness down at the bottom of your ground area, that gives you the, the look like the light is shining on that old olive area. See how that just lights that up, getting that dark in front of it. it also blends in that image so you don't have a break there. That's good. I've got a little hill. 
All right. So there's our basic black that was pounced in. Now I, I like to add a little highlight and I love my white gel pen. Um, I'm going to put dots very quickly. I'm not trying to hit each little petal in the flower. Um, I just want a few dots here. I do this quickly. It really lights these flowers up. Okay. And then I'm going to add a highlight just on the right side of just a few of these grasses. consistent um, with your highlighting and, and grasses and on the sides of trees. Um, if you put one on the right side make sure you're consistent and keep things on the right side. Doing the left side I've added a little feet glue on the bottom and there is our finished main image panel. Um, it goes super quick so that's always good in stamping because we want to get those cards done. Here's our finished project. I'm going to show you what pieces you need to complete this. Um, our main image panel that we did, this panel here, was three by four and a half. Then I added a three and a quarter by five and a quarter inch panel below it. The old olive panel is four by five and a quarter. Our biggest basic black panel is four and a quarter by five and a half. I like to add a white card base. Um, that just seems to finish it off nicely for me. And so that is eight and a half by five and a half. It's folded in half, so it's a long piece, folded in half. Our, my embellishment on here is the modern label punch. Um, love this punch. Anyway, I'm going to punch two out of this basic black. Okay. And a little trick I've learned is to hold the two together and cut them at the same time. That way you have the same sized pieces. Okay. You don't have to worry about trying to get them even. So there's that. And then I added a silver brad, one of the mini silver brads. To the modern label punch and added it on there and there you go if you have any questions please contact me um, mzendorf at aim.com or just click on my blog and you'll be able to contact me through that and order any supplies that you'd like um, i'm going to send along a complete supply list it'll be in your email thank you